sending you live. A very good morning to one and all present with us today for seventh lecture of international hardshell workshop on global seismology and uh, tectonics. Is it okay? Yes, it is okay. We can we can hear you. Yes. The tremendous energy shown by both the speakers and the participants have been the hallmark of IBWS GST. I'm sure each and every one of the participants are benefiting from the knowledge dissipation from several eminent speakers. I would like to repeat that all the lecture sessions are attended by at least 500 participants with agile and interactive participation. May I request to keep the same speed, please? So this lecture shall be presented by renowned seismologist of 21st century, Professor Dapeng Zhao from Tohoku University, Japan. The title of his lecture uh, is Seismic and Astrotropic Tomography, New Insight into Seismotectronics, Volcanism, and Geodynamics. Before his session starts, may I request our session chairman, Professor J.R. Kyle, sir, for his initial remarks. About it, Professor Jayakai. Thank you, Santanu. It's my really great pleasure to have one of my best friends of the world in this workshop and to listen to his one of the most interesting lectures on seismic tomography today morning. Professor Dapeng Zhao is actually my not only best friend, he is my teacher in seismic tomography. We communicated through emails in 1990s and then we first published seismic tomography paper on Northeast India in 1998 in BSSA. Since then, we collaborated for every large earthquakes in India, like Kilari earthquake, like Bhuj earthquake, and so on. And we did publish all these interesting results in the international journals. I also visited the AMA University on INSA fellowship, INSA JSPS fellowship in 2001 or so, and that time I learned a lot from Professor Chow. That was the first time I met him personally in Japan. I will not be long. I just warmly welcome my best friend to give a best one of the best lectures in this workshop. Professor Zhao, please, and over before that I over to Shantanu, please. Uh, thank you, sir, for a nice introduction. Now, may I read out, summarized uh, by the of Professor Tapping Zhou. Professor Tapping Zhou has been serving yes. as professor at Tohoku University, Japan, since 2007. Before joining Tohoku University, Professor Zhou served as professor at Ihimi University, Japan, from 2003 to 2007. He had also previously served as research scientist at the University of Southern California and Washington University. After pursuing bachelor's degree in geophysics from Peking University, China in 1984, he studied MS in geophysics from Tohoku University in 1988. He completed his PhD from the same university in the year 1991. Then until 1995, he carried out postdoctoral research from the University of Alaska and Caltech. <coughs> Professor Zhao's core research interests include earthquake seismology, solid earth geophysics, and art interior structure. He's a pioneer of seismic tomography of the art, seismic and astrophy tomography, mapping mental convection, and even the seismic tomography of the moon. Professor Zhao has published more than 300 peer-reviewed papers, including papers in nature and science, with more than 25,000 citations and an ACE index of 82. He has delivered more than 60 invited and keynote lectures at different parts of the world. He is a recipient of many awards of excellence. For example, Excellent Student Award at Peking University in 1983, 
most cited paper award from 2004 to 2007 by SVR in 2008. World top 10 Arctic researchers among 30,000 authors, according to their publication and citations, during 2002 to 2010 by Science Watch. The 2014 Island Arc Award from Geological Society of Japan. 2016 Highly Cited Research Award by SVR. He has also served as the editor of Journal of Asian Art Sciences from 2010 to 2019. I would like to conclude here and request Professor Zhao for his lecture. Thank you. About the Professor Zhao. Okay. Thank you very much for a nice, uh, for the kind uh, introduction. I first want to uh, uh, thank the organizer, uh, including uh, Professor Kyer and uh, Sentinel and uh, other members of the organizing committee for inviting me to this uh, uh, international workshop. It's really my honor and pleasure. My research field uh, has been uh, seismography. It is a technique to study the 3D structure of Earth's interior using uh, seismic data. Its principle is the same as a medical CT scan. It is one of the most powerful tools to see the Earth's interior directly. You can hear me, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can hear me. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're audible, sir. Thank Thank you. You. However, the traditional seismic tomography shows only a static uh, snapshots of the Earth structure with little dynamic information. Uh, seismic anatropy is a physical property of the Earth's material that seismic velocity changes with direction. It can provide geodynamic information, uh, such as uh, crustal and lithospherical deformation, mantle convection, and uh, tectonic stress. The cause of an anisotropy in the mantle is uh, lattice preferred orientation of mantle uh, minerals, uh, such as olivine. Uh, in the crust, the cause of uh, an anisotropy is a shape uh, preferred orientation, uh, such as active faults, folds, and other ge uh, geological uh, surface features. Both body wave and surface wave data can be used uh, to study seismic anisotropy. Shear wave splitting measurement is the most popular method, but its depth resolution is low. In contrast, P wave anisotropic tomography can determine three dimensional distribution of anisotropy and has a high depth resolution. The study of P wave anisotropy studied over 50 years ago by two famous papers by Hess and Beckers in 1964 and 1965. PV or tropic tomography studied in 1980s, but uh, meaningful results are obtained mainly in the past decade due to the uh, improving seismic networks and the better data quality and the quantity. PV or tropic in a uh, hexagonal medium, such as olivine, can be expressed by this equation. Here, A is isotropic component, B e and E are uh, represent the strength of an entropy. Alpha is the angle between the ray and the symmetry axis. Uh, in this equation, the cosine four alpha term is very small and can be ignored. Uh, consider the ray azimuth and the incident angle. Uh, P wave velocity perturbation can be expressed by uh, this equation. Here, A is the isotropic velocity term. B represents a anisotropy strength. C is a, a azimuthal, azimuth of a symmetry axis. So these are the three unknown parameters uh, which can be determined by inverting travel time data. The observation equation for P wave travel time uh, can be expressed uh, by this equation for the anisotropic tomography. Here, the SI uh, is a, a right hand side. Uh, represent the four hypercentral parameters of a local earthquake. So solving the system of the, of the observation equations using a large number of real time data, we can obtain a 3D model of isotropic velocity and uh, azimuthal uh, anisotropy. However, to get a reliable result, very dense and crisscrossing rates are needed. As this figure shows the tectonic setting of the Western Pacific and East Asia region. In the east, the Pacific plate 
and the young Philippine C plate are subducting beneath the Eurasian plate. And uh, uh, in the uh, southwest, the India plate is subducting beneath the Eurasian plate, uh, causing the high uh, Tibetan plateau. Uh, in this figure, the red triangles show the intro plate volcanoes. Okay, so we can see uh, there are quite several uh, intro plate active volcanoes in and around Northeast Asia and also in the Southwest China. And the red stars show the larger earthquakes which have occurred since uh, 2008. Uh, for example, uh, the 2008 Wenchuan earthquake in the Sichuan province. Uh, southwest China, and uh, the 2011 uh, Tokoki earthquake uh, of uh, Northeast Japan, and uh, 2015 Nepal earthquake here, and uh, 2015 Boni uh, very deep earthquake here, uh, which have a depth uh, uh, greater than 600 kilometer depths. And uh, also uh, the E represents uh, the 2016 Kuomoto earthquake in the Kyushu in the southwest of Japan. So, uh, so far, we have used the seismography methods to study the seismotectonics, volcanism, and the mental dynamics of this uh, broad region. Well, we also studied other regions like North America, uh, South America, and Africa. But uh, uh, the main focus of my group uh, has been in the uh, Western Pacific and East Asia region. So in this talk, I will show you uh, uh, some of our recent uh, results. Well, mainly published in the file in the five or ten years. Okay, so this figure shows the uh, distribution of seismic stations uh, in the, in this region. Uh, now we have more than three thousand seismic stations, uh, mainly uh, uh, deployed on the Japan Islands and uh, uh, eastern China. So in the areas covered by the dense uh, seismic network. Uh, such as uh, Japan and East China, we can obtain a higher resolution isotropic and uh, nextropic tomography. So this low figure shows the uh, uh, distribution of the some earthquakes uh, we used, well, about 17,000 uh, events we used in our tomography studies. Uh, so uh, usually we can use more than 1 million uh, PV arrival time data for tomography inversion. We have not only shallow events, uh, but also some deep earthquakes. So this figure shows a uh, uh, whole mantle tomography uh, beneath uh, uh, the East Asia region. Uh, it shows the e uh, two uh, east-west water cross sections uh, from a surface down to a common boundary. Here, the red color shows a low velocity. Okay, means uh, uh, the velocity is slower than the average velocity uh, in the standard uh, Earth model, uh, such as the uh, uh, SP91 Earth model. And the blue color shows a high velocity, means a faster velocity than the uh, standard, uh, standard 1D velocity model. And here, the white dots show the earthquakes uh, in a uh, wideness of uh, about uh, uh, 50 kilometers uh, along each uh, uh, cross section. So in this figure, we can see uh, the subducting uh, Pacific slab clearly. Here, the, the, the blue zone uh, being the Japan Islands and the Japan Sea. And also the slab become stagnant in the mental transition zone uh, beneath the Korean Peninsula and also Eastern China. And in the upper mantle above the slab, we can see very strong low velocity anomaly and uh, uh, beneath the uh, uh, intraplate volcanoes, uh, such as the uh, Changbai and the Wudalinch volcanoes. So in the lower mantle, we can also see some high velocity anomalies here, uh, which represents the uh, uh, subducting slab collapsing. Uh, down to a uh, uh, low mantle, even the common boundary. Okay, so uh, so this is a uh, uh, the large scale uh, mantle structure uh, beneath this region. Now let me show the high resolution regional tomography uh, beneath the East Asia. So this figure shows the nine uh, east west water cross sections. Uh, the profile profile shown here, passing through the Japan Islands and the eastern China. The cross sections are from a surface down to a thirteen. 100 kilometer depth. The two dashed line shows the 410 and the 660 kilometer discount units. And once again, the white dots show the uh, earthquake seismicity within uh, along each uh, uh, cross section. So once again, we can see the subducting Pacific slab beneath Japan 
uh, islands on the Japan Sea, and we can see clearly the stagnant slab in the mantle transition zone beneath eastern China. And also in the upper mantle, once again, we see the lowest anomalies in the active intropid volcanoes. So uh, in the cross section passing through the Liu and the Taiwan, here we can see the subducting Philippine Sea slab clearly, uh, which is also uh, subducting down to a, a mantle transition zone. So in the southern uh, cross sections beneath Yizi Mariana, we can see a subducting Pacific slab uh, vertical become vertical, and uh, it is uh, directly penetrating uh, down to a low mantle. However, uh, in the Yizi Bonny region, uh, we don't have many stations, so the resolution uh, becomes lower. Uh, this uh, slide shows you the uh, photo of the Chang Changbai volcano. Okay, this is the character of the Changbai volcano. So this volcano is located at the boundary between uh, North Korea and China, shown here. So uh, it is the uh, largest and the most active intropid volcano in uh, East Asia. So this volcano has uh, erupted several times in the last 1,000 years. So it is certainly very active and a dangerous volcano. Uh, this figure shows the east-west and north-south water cross section uh, passing through the Changbei volcano. The cross sections are from a surface down to 650 uh, kilometer depths. So this dashed line shows a 410 kilometer discontinuity. So once again, in the mantle transition zone, we can see the high velocity anomaly, which represents the stagnant Pacific slab. But in the upper mantle, we can see the clear the vertical low velocity anomaly. So uh, from the surface uh, down to 410 kilometer discontinuity right beneath the Changbei volcano. So we think uh, this is a, a hot and wet up valley uh, feeding uh, uh, cause of the, the Changbei intropid volcano. So based on these uh, geophysical results, mainly seismography, uh, in 2004, more than 16 uh, years ago, we proposed this uh, big mental edge model. We think a big mantle wedge has formed uh, in the upper mantle and upper part of the mantle transition zone above the stagnant uh, Pacific slab. So several processes uh, have occurred uh, in the big mantle wedge, uh, such as a shallow and deep uh, slab dehydration, uh, corner flows uh, in the big mantle wedge. Uh, that is a hot and wet upwelling flow uh, in the big mantle wedge. Seeing the fracture of the continental uh, lithosphere and the upwelling of the hot and wet uh, Centrospheric materials uh, causes the uh, Japan Sea opening and also the uh, intropid volcanoes, uh, such as Changbai and the Wudalinch volcanoes in uh, uh, northeast China. So, here the big mantle wedge is not, not only not just a car, <laughs> it also means a big mantle wedge. So, this figure shows our uh, uh, natural peak tomography. Okay, it shows uh, uh, three map views at 200 kilometer. Uh, 260 kilometer and 320 kilometer depths. So the colors, red and blue, red and blue colors, show the isotropic velocity, the same as uh, the image I, I just showed you. Okay, the red color shows the low velocity, blue color shows the high velocity, then the uh, average uh, mental velocity. Uh, but the black bars, you can see the many small black bars, uh, which uh, represent the fast velocity direction of the azimuthal and isotropy. Okay, so we can see uh, in the mantle wedge and also in the mantle below the uh, subducting slab. Here the blue zone shows the subducting slab, and the faster velocity direction is roughly oriented toward the northwest and uh, southeast. So this direction is roughly parallel with the direction of the Pacific plate subduction. Okay, so these are uh, uh, azimuthal and natural P, the faster velocity directions. So certainly uh, reflects the corner flow in the big mantle wedge, driven by the subduction of the Pacific plate. So our natural, our natural peak tomography uh, clearly provides the dynamic information uh, in the uh, big mantle wedge and also uh, in the mantle below the uh, slab. And this figure shows uh, our uh, shear wave stability uh, results uh, in this region. Okay, the red and the blue bars show the result obtained by a uh, different method. But uh, roughly, you can see the faster uh, shear wave uh, a natural P, also oriented uh, toward the northwest southeast, uh, parallel with the uh, pre-subduction -sub direction. 
So this also quite uh, consistent with our PVO uh, nystropic results. So both P and S will then uh, uh, results uh, suggest the uh, existence of a uh, mental flow in the big mental batch uh, driven by the uh, police subduction. Here we have a question. Uh, among the interplate volcanoes in Northeast Asia, shown in the, uh, as a black triangle uh, in this, uh, uh, this map, why Changbei volcano is the largest and the most active? Is there any local cause for the Changbei volcano? Uh, in addition to the hot upwelling flow in the big mental edge. So we invested in this uh, uh, issue uh, in uh, 2013 in our uh, GGI paper. This figure shows the uh, distribution of the large earthquakes in the sub latin Pacific slum. Okay, so the colors of the dots show the uh, focal depths. The black dots show the very deep earthquakes uh, with the focal depths greater than 500 kilometers. OK, so you can see uh, these uh, black dots are all uh, big earthquakes with a magnitude greater than 6.0. Some of the uh, deep events are greater than 7, 7, ma magnitude 7. So these uh, larger deep events occurred just to the east of the Changbei volcano, about only about 200 kilometers. OK, but these uh, deep events uh, have a, a greater uh, focal depth, uh, greater than 500 kilometers. OK, we think uh, the generation of these deep earthquakes uh, could be a local cause uh, for the Changbei volcano. Uh, just uh, okay, so this figure shows uh, uh, five cross sections passing through the Changbei volcano uh, together with the deep earthquakes shown in the uh, white dots. Okay, so you can see uh, uh, these deep earthquakes occur in the sub latin slab in the mantle transition zone. And in the upper mantle, we can see the lowest anomaly, the red zone extend toward the east, just above the deep earthquakes. OK, so based on these results, we uh, propose this model. We think uh, there is a link, there's a correlation between the deep earthquakes and the Changbei volcanism. So the possible process could be like this. Uh, the seawater could uh, enter the uh, subducting, enter the Pacific plate uh, through the after rise force. OK, just before the Pacific plate subduction, you know, uh, just near the trench axis, uh, the, the Pacific plate become uh, elevated. It's, be, it's uh, after rise. OK, so uh, some uh, normal faulting earthquake occur uh, in this area, in the after rise area. So soon after the generation of the normal uh, faulting earthquakes, seawater could enter into the lithosphere through these uh, uh, normal faults, OK? So because some of the uh, earthquake could be quite big, more than 7.5 or even magnitude 8, OK? So the faults could be quite, uh, quite, uh, quite large. Uh, the normal faults could extend down to tens of kilometers into the uh, Pacific plate. So seawater may uh, enter to the quite a deeper part of the Pacific plate. So after subduction, the these fluids, these seawater, could be preserved within the uh, subducting uh, slab. OK, and uh, so when the plate going down uh, to this uh, uh, is a mental transition zone, so the plate, the Pacific plate become bended again uh, beneath the Changbei volcano. So uh, uh, some very deep and a large earthquake could be occur, could be generated. And uh, some of the uh, little deep events uh, could uh, have a magnitude uh, of 7.5. So thus, so the fluids preserved in the slab could be released uh, to the overlying mantle edge by the earthquake faulting, by the deep earthquake faulting. Okay, so these fluids uh, could uh, uh, become uh, magma and additional uh, magma and fluids, so feeding uh, the Changbei volcano. So thus, the Changbei volcano becomes the largest and the most active interplate volcano in Northeast Asia. So we think. Anyway, so we think there could be a link, there could be a relationship between the deep earthquake generation and the Changbei uh, volcano. Uh, this figure shows a, a recent geochemical uh, model by uh, geochemists uh, in uh, South Korea. Okay, so uh, they also uh, uh, support our big mental, big mental edge model. 
Uh, this figure shows the four vertical cross sections uh, passing through the Tengchun volcano uh, here in the southwest uh, China, shown here. And we can see uh, uh, the red triangle shows the location of the Tengchun volcano. And we can see clear lowest anomalies in the upper mantle uh, beneath the Tengchun volcano. And here we can see the blue zone, so which is a subalpine slab, could be the subalpine uh, Burma microplate or the subalpine India plate. Okay, so we think the mechanism of this uh, Tengchun volcano, uh, Tengchun volcanism could be similar to the Changbei volcano uh, due to the uh, deep subduction of the uh, India plate and also the big mantle wedge above the above the slab. Uh, this figure shows two uh, east-west water cross sections passing through the Hainan volcano in the southernmost of China. Okay, so here's an island called the Hainan Island. So it's also a uh, quite an active volcano. And uh, here we can see quite a clear lower anomalies uh, from a surface down to 1,000 uh, kilometer depth right beneath the Hainan volcano. But in the uh, west, we can see a subducting uh, slab, maybe the India subducting India plate and the Tengchun volcano. And uh, in the east, uh, we can see also the high velocity anomaly, which may, uh, may be the subletting uh, Philippine Sea slab or the uh, Eurasian uh, slab or both. So we think the active Hainan volcano uh, may be a hot spot uh, caused by the uh, subduction of the Indian plate in the west and the uh, uh, Eurasian and the Philippine Sea plate in the east. So there's certainly uh, relationship between the deep subductions and the mantle plume. Our recent work uh, shows that the intraplate volcanoes in Vietnam may be also caused by the same process in this region. Okay, so now let me show the high resolution uh, local tomography in Japan. Uh, so this figure shows the uh, uh, eight east-west water cross section uh, beneath the north of Japan uh, from a surface down to 200 kilometer depth. And here we see the subducting Pacific slab clearly, uh, which has, has a thickness of 90 kilometer. And in the mantle wedge, this is a small mantle wedge, not a big mantle wedge. Okay, small mantle wedge above the Pacific slab. We can see the deep in uh, red zone. Uh, this is the upper value flow uh, driven by the uh, slab subduction. So which, uh, which is the south zone of the arc uh, magmas in this region. Uh, this figure shows a uh, uh, high resolution uh, net tropical tomography uh, beneath uh, northeast Japan. Uh, this figure A shows an uh, uh, image uh, in the central part of Mount Wedge. You can see here, this is a deep in, deep in plane. Okay. And uh, B shows an image within the subalpine slab. And C shows the image uh, below the subalpine uh, slab, in the mantle below the slab. Okay. So once again, the colors, red and blue colors, show the isotropic velocity, but the black bars show the fast velocity direction of azimuthal and entropy. So once again, we can see the uh, fast velocity direction beneath the volcanic front and the big arc area is oriented toward the northwest and the southeast. So this certainly uh, reflects the uh, subduction driven corner flow uh, in the mantle wedge. But uh, in the subducting slab, the faster direction is a trench parallel, okay? So, which uh, may uh, uh, reflect the uh, slab uh, deformation and also uh, maybe shape preferred, shape preferred orientation uh, due to the actual faults, normal faults uh, produced at the, uh, after the rise area. So in the mantle below the slab, once again, we see the uh, faster versus direction roughly uh, east-west or northwest, uh, southeast. So this may also uh, reflect the uh, deformation of the atmosphere uh, caused by the uh, slab subduction. So uh, this uh, net surface tomography uh, provides uh, important uh, information about the geodynamics uh, in this region. So this is a cartoon uh, showing the uh, size of natural P uh, beneath uh, northern Japan and the Japan Sea. So we see the subduction driven corner flow uh, in the mantle wedge, and also we see the uh, anisotropy in the slab, a uh, roughly uh, trend parallel, and also we can also see uh, the anisotropy in the sub-slab mantle, 
uh, which reflects the shear deformation in the arsenosphere, triggered by the uh, subbiotic slum. Okay, so this figure shows uh, east-west water cross section uh, beneath the uh, south uh, Japan, uh, passing through the Kyushu uh, Island and Izu, uh, uh, Izu Islands. So we can see uh, two slabs in this uh, uh, cross section. One is the Sabalatin Pacific slab, which is quite old and thick, with a thickness of about 90 kilometers. But uh, here we can see a Sabalatin Philippine Sea slab. So this is a young slab, okay? But the size species uh, in the Philippine Sea slab ends at about 200 kilometers. So below 200 kilometer depth, uh, we can see the aseismic slab, that is in the slab, no earthquakes, okay? But we still see the uh, heaviest anomaly uh, of the Philippine Sea slab, which is penetrating uh, in the mantle. So here we see the lowest anomaly uh, in the mantle edge above the uh, Philippine Sea slab, uh, which is the south zone of the arc uh, magma, magmatism. But here, between the Philippine Sea slab and Pacific slab, we can see the big uh, lowest anomaly, this is red zone. So we think this is a hot and wet upwelling flow uh, associated with the deep, deep dehydration uh, reaction of the Pacific slab. So there could be interaction between two slabs uh, through the fluids from the deep slab uh, dehydration. Uh, this figure shows a, a P and S view uh, tomography image uh, beneath uh, Kyushu passing through the epicenter of the 2016 Kumamoto earthquake uh, in, in Kyushu, okay? So uh, the image are from a surface down to 50 uh, kilometer depth. So the two uh, line shows the Conrad and the Moho uh, discontinuities. So here there are several uh, active uh, arc volcanoes like Aso, Kujiu, uh, Tsurumi, Dakei. So beneath these active uh, volcanoes, we can see clear lowest anomalies uh, both the P and S field tomography shows the lowest anomaly uh, in these, uh, these uh, uh, volcanoes. So the Kuomotor earthquake occurred in a heaviest anomaly in the uh, upper uh, crust shown here. However, in the lower crust and uppermost mantle, we can see the uh, lowest anomaly, uh, which may reflect the fluids of magma associated with the uh, uh, active arc volcanoes. So uh, there is certainly an uh, interaction uh, between the earthquake and the volcanoes, uh, which are uh, related by uh, fluids, uh, crustal fluids and magma in this region. So this figure shows a cartoon uh, showing the general uh, structure and uh, dynamics beneath the southern zone, uh, such as Japan. Uh, we think the uh, slab dehydration is a very important process in the southern zones. Uh, beneath the volcanic front and the backpack area, the fluids from a uh, slab dehydration may uh, uh, cause the arc magma. Okay, the arc magma uh, going up uh, near to the surface may uh, produce the uh, active volcanoes, but at the same time may also affect the generation of large cross earthquakes. Uh, beneath the frog region, the temperature is lower, so the magma and the volcanoes uh, cannot be uh, produced, but the fluids from a slab dehydration can go directly to the upper uh, crust. So when the, when the fluids under the active force, uh, larger earthquakes can be, uh, can be triggered. So we uh, also found that the fluids uh, related uh, lowest anomalies, lower let's say high person ratio anomalies uh, in the larger earthquake, in the south zones of larger earthquakes in the Asia uh, continental region. Uh, for example, uh, this figure uh, shows uh, the water cross section of p-velocity, s-velocity, and the person ratio in the south zone of the 2001 India uh, Buji earthquake. Uh, so this is a result uh, done by Professor Kair, myself, and Dr. Mishra, uh, first published in 2002 in the GRO paper, and also published uh, uh, more detailed results, and also the uh, contents uh, fraction of the fluids and the correct density by uh, Dr. Mishra and myself uh, in the EPSL. So this work was done when uh, Dr. O.P. Mishra uh, was a PhD student uh, at my lab uh, at the time uh, in 2002. In 2001, I think, uh, Professor Kair also uh, came to visit my lab, uh, as he just mentioned 
uh, okay, so this is a very nice result. So we can see the uh, lowest anomaly in the PV tomography, and also we can see the very clear high person ratio anomaly in the south zone, uh, in the uh, in the uh, center of the Bushy earthquake, which may reflect the crust of fluids. So that triggered this uh, uh, big uh, Bushy earthquake. So this uh, this figure should imagine in the Beijing area, uh, in the China, in northeast China, and uh, so uh, these are uh, big events. Uh, occurred in the 1679 with the magnitude uh, uh, 8.0, the center of big earthquake. Uh, this one shows the magnitude uh, 7.8, the 1976 Tangshan earthquake, which caused a huge damage to uh, this society. So we also found the lowest anomaly uh, in the lower crust beneath the hypercenters of these large earthquakes. Here, uh, the two figures show the uh, image uh, in the 2008 Wenchuan earthquake uh, in the southwest uh, in uh, eastern Tibetan Plateau. Uh, this uh, uh, image uh, in the south zone of the 1927 Bulan earthquake. And uh, so we found that in the two uh, uh, Tibetan earthquake uh, regions, uh, we also found the low velocity and high person ratio anomaly in the lower crust uh, below uh, the hypercenter, which may reflect the crust of fluids and also across the flow, uh, which may trigger uh, these larger earthquakes. Uh, not, now let me show you the image uh, in the south zone of the uh, 2011 uh, Tokoki earthquake uh, here uh, in Japan. <coughs> and uh, so uh, this uh, huge earthquake occur in the mega mega zone between the sub Atlantic Pacific plate and the overlying uh, North American plate. So this uh, red line shows the uh, sort of fault zone, okay? So this left figure shows the tomography along uh, in the fault zone, along the fault zone, okay? So here the blue uh, color shows the high velocity uh, in the fault zone, and the uh, red uh, color shows the low velocity uh, in the fault zone. So even in the same fault zone, we can see the strong variations in the uh, seismic velocity. And here, the open circles show the larger earthquakes with a magnitude of uh, more than 6.0 uh, in the past 111 years, from 1900 to 2011, okay? So in the past uh, 111 years, there are so many big events, mega thrust events occurred uh, in this area. <coughs> here, the... <coughs> The yellow star shows the uh, uh, foreshock, mid-shock, and uh, aftershocks of the 2011 uh, Tokoki earthquake. <coughs> so we can see a quite a good correlation between the distribution of large earthquakes <coughs> and also tomography. Uh, most of these larger, larger events occur in a high velocity anomalies that is in the in the blue zones. But in the uh, red zone, uh, there's quite a few events. So these events occurred either in the high velocity regions or at the boundary between the low velocity and the high velocity zones. <coughs> we think the high velocity zones may uh, reflect the strongly coupled uh, areas that is as parties uh, in the fault zone. But the low velocity zones, uh, the red zones may reflect the less coupled or decouple the patches, which may contain more fluids and sediments. So in other words, we think the structural heterogeneity in the fault zone controls the generation of the large earthquakes. And uh, here we compare the tomography with the uh, uh, distribution of the cold seismic slip. Okay, so we can see uh, uh, this area is a large uh, cold seismic slip area, uh, which correspond to the high velocity anomaly of Miyagi uh, shown here. So we think this uh, of Miyagi area is a, a big asperity or a cluster of asperities that ruptured during the March 11 Tokoki uh, earthquake may shock. <coughs> the asperity means the strongly coupled area uh, in the fault zone. So we found similar features in the south zone of the 2015 Nepal earthquake area. So this figure shows the uh, tomography uh, we published in 2016. 
and uh, showing the uh, PV velocity image along uh, the Himalaya mega thrust. Okay, so we can see uh, this uh, uh, red uh, star shows the uh, uh, hypercenter of this uh, uh, big earthquake may shock. So just beside it, we can see a high velocity anomaly. Okay, <clears throat> so this uh, uh, red figure shows the uh, uh, distribution of cold seismic sleep uh, by the uh, Cockett's and other co workers. So we can see quite a good correlation between a large cold seismic sleep area and a high velocity anomaly uh, in the Himalaya uh, mega thrust fault. Okay, <clears throat> so this is similar to the uh, results in the uh, Tokoki uh, earthquake area. So finally, in conclusion, the subadaptive Pacific slab uh, is a stagnant in the mantle transition zone near East Asia. A big mantle wedge has formed above the stagnant slab. The active intraplate volcanoes in Northeast Asia are caused by the hot and wet upvalue flows in the big mantle wedge. Seismic and net shock tomography provides new information on mantle flows in the big mantle wedge and sub-slab mantle, as well as slab deformation. In subterranean zones, arc magma and fluids from slab dehydration can trigger large cross earthquakes, uh, such as the 2016 Kuomoto earthquake in uh, southwest Japan. The 2011 Tokoki earthquake sequence was controlled by the structural heterogeneities in the megastar zone. A similar feature is also found in the 2015 Nepal uh, earthquake uh, south zone. That's all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir, for your thought-provoking talk on seismic anisotropy tomography. Uh, your model, that is BMW model, uh, big pen tail width model for intrapid uh, volcanism, uh, was really interesting. Uh, now we have two special guests, but I'll introduce them later. But first, let us have uh, remarks from our session chairman, Professor Zierkel. How about it, Professor Zierkel? <laughs> Thank you, Fantanu. Thank you uh, for giving me this opportunity. Professor Zhao, what to talk about your lecture? It is so educative, so informative, and you have covered the almost all subduction zone and connected interpret zones. I have a small query. You have talked about a large earthquake below Changbai volcanic region. And you have shown in the model that your subduction slab getting flat below the volcanic region. And what is the mechanism of the strong or large earthquake below the volcanic region? Uh, you have so shown the earthquake in the slab. Yes. Uh, yes. And uh, yes. what would be the mechanism of that earthquake in such a such a you know, large depth? So earthquake. Yeah. Yeah. Below that, yeah. below that Changbai, below that Changbai volcano. Yes. It's a, uh, uh, there are thrust earthquakes, thrust. Yeah. With a magnitude about the 7.5 or so. No, 7 point something magnitude, large, large earthquake below Changbai volcano. And what could be the mechanism for that? Uh, Mainly caused by bending, bending of the slab. Okay, you can see the the Pacific slab bends suddenly in this area. Thank so you. So these large deep earthquakes are caused by the the bending, sudden bending of the subterranean slab. Yes, yes. It was wonderful with the results and with the model. We understood the geodynamics of the intraplate earthquakes and subductic plate earthquakes. Thank you so much. Over to Santanu, thank please. Uh, thank, you. thank you very much, sir. Uh, so we have uh, two eminent uh, scientists as a guest who are a former PhD student of Professor Zhao. One is Professor Obinitra, he's the director of National Center for uh, Seismology. And second one is Professor Mohammad Farooq from King Abdul Aziz University of Saudi Arabia. Now, may I request uh, Professor Opinistra, Director, National Center for Seismology, for his uh, comments. About to Professor Mistra. Yeah. Hi. Good to see Hi. you. 
So I'm really happy to see the mentor of the many seismologists in the world, all over the world. And I remember that Professor Zhao, each and every slide is self-educated. No need of the question so nicely. I learned a lot. We learned a lot. And uh, I'm very thrilled to, to recall that you are the global tomographer, seismologist that none of the part of the world is left. You have where the earthquake we have done. You have done the, the nicest tomograph of the many parts of the seismogenic belts of the country over the country. And your tools have been used in India extensively. What I borrowed from you and then we modified many things with you in the Indian context and, and the several papers actually give us the boost. And now I am grooming many researchers using your tools and your codes that the, how you can peep inside the earth by using the tomographic technique. So that is the beauty of Professor Zhao. Uh, uh, actually papers, every papers has his cartoon, every papers has the model and that is depicting with the integrated approach to prove that the what is going inside the earth where we cannot peep inside by any tools, none other than the seismic tomography. So Professor Zhao, I am really happy to see you. I wish that you should be become younger and younger to educate us more and more. Dr. Kayal has uh, retired, but he is more dynamic uh, than many Indians. And I think you are you are you, you have a lot of times to educate the generations. So, right. so I, I have no word to, to express that. But Santru, uh, Professor Zhao himself is an institution in seismology. If you go through, nobody can match him. He's the best seismologist as per the Google citation, you can say that. And that is proud that I am his student. I am his first researcher who groomed me like uh, uh, what, what a teacher can do. So, so very good. And uh, I remember I am become nostalgic remembering Geodynamics Research Center when Professor, Professor Zhao working day and the night and he accepted to educate us, particularly Indians. He had loved to Indians to educate, to educate uh, the seismology in a very lucid way and we are grateful to you, sir. Our paper uh, you might remember that in plate interiors, we determined the seven parameters to prove that the Bhuj earthquake was the fluid driven earthquake. And uh, now it has been established. So please bless us, bless youngest us, all seismology in the world. You are the pioneer for that. And uh, you remember that my first scholar, Dr. A.P. Singh is here. Good morning, sir. He, he also did the tomography, his PhD in the entire Bhuj using the, the, the huge data set. And you told me that Tomography is dictated by the, the quality, not by the quantity. And that right. AP Singh had proved that the high quantity of the data and the low uh, had no work to, to get the different results if the quality of the data will be same. So even the smaller quality of the data can yield the good results. And that message, I, 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 I am really want to give my contemporaries, my researchers, I'm very happy to see you. And okay. uh, you please collaborate with the National Center for Seismology because I am the director over there, what you dreamed for me. I am leading the National Center. So let us, we have a work to, to more data set for the Indians, Indian researchers, and I'm open to give the data for the better research by the Indians from the NCS. So I, I, I just wish that your blessings through a cooperation can be uh, generated in the future. Thank you, Thank sir. You. I cannot Thank ask you any questions because it is self-explanatory and I know I, I, every mechanism is understood. So thank you so much, sir. Please take care. My regards Thank to your you. family. And, yes, and I, I really feel very happy. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. So we have Professor Mohammad Farooq from King Abdulaziz University. He's also a former student of Professor Zhao. Over to Professor Farooq. Over to Professor Farooq. Farooq, please unmute your microphone. Yes. Hi, Farooq san. Hello. Can you see me? See you. Yeah. What happened? I think we have some uh, communication problem. Maybe some communication error is there. <coughs> yeah, we can take his uh, uh, his uh, comments later on. Uh, 
Now, uh, Dr. Sotri, you want to ask something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, good morning, Professor Chao. How are you doing? Yeah, uh, I have a couple of questions. If you can kindly take a few. Uh, my first question is that while designing your tomographic experiment, uh, what are the priority art information you consider? And what's the resolution test you adopted to check the resolution of your tomographic uh, results? Am I audible? Shall I repeat the question? Shall I repeat the question? To check the resolution? Yeah, my first question is what are the priority art information you consider while designing your tomographic experiment? And my second question is what's the resolution test you adopted uh, and the velocity perturbation, if any, introduced? Okay, uh, now let me uh, first uh, answer your first question. We have uh, different uh, ways uh, to uh, uh, confirm the resolution. Uh, yeah, this is to the well use of the check about the resolution test, uh, restoring resolution test. We can also uh, calculate the formal, uh, formal uh, matrix uh, of the error and the resolution matrix. So there are several okay. ways to, to do that. Of course, mm -hmm. we need also to uh, uh, plot the uh, distribution, distribution of rays, see mm -hmm. if the rays used are really uh, uh, crisscrossing, and if the, uh, the rays are. are have a, a uniform and a dense distribution. So uh, checking the resolution is the most important way uh, to confirm the results. So the first question is about the, the progress. Can, can uh, the repeat? priori art, priori art information if any considered. And uh, uh, the, uh, the idea, I wanted to also know about the Parameterization regarding the heterogeneities are concerned. What what parameterization you consider for the heterogeneity? Mr. San, can you can you tell me the can you tell me the question? He 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 wants that uh, what parameterization you have adopted? Any prior information about subducting plate is there? Means plate geometry you have considered in the inversion, or you have taken just like uh, without any consideration of the plate geometry and try to do the inversion? Thank you so much. So for clearing my question. OK, thank yeah. you. OK, uh, so uh, generally uh, we just use uh, uh, the conventional one dimensional model for the inversion and we use the three dimensional grids, grid nodes uh, to represent the uh, velocity distribution. In some area like Japan, the geometry of the subtend slab is quite well determined by the converted and refracted views. So the geometry of the subtend slab is well known. So we can introduce the subtracting slab into the model, okay, for Japan. But you know, maybe also other, you know, uh, subtracting zone like the Cascadia, where the geometry of slab is quite well determined. So we can introduce the slab into the uh, study model. Otherwise, uh, in, in most regions, we just use a one-dimensional study model. And we use a 3D uh, grid node to uh, represent the velocity variation. Is that okay with you? Yeah, okay, yeah. I think, I think Vijit, yeah. uh, Vijit uh, sir told that where the plate dynamics, plate geometry is this position is known. It is used as a prior yes, information. Sir. But take the case of the India in Northeast. We have used the no prior information, but even the subducting Indian plate is well imaged in the tomographic images. So 1D velocity with a 3D grid node has a capable tool to even the image, the subducting scenario. Thank you so much for it was the beauty of the tool. It is the beauty uh -huh. of the tool of 3D tomography of Professor Zhao. It can be uh -huh. used with the, with the prior information of the plate geometry or without prior information of the plate geometry. In both okay. cases, it works very well. OK, fine. Thank yeah. you so much. Just, my, yeah, just yeah. last one small question. And how okay. many iterations did you consider to get a good resolution? And what are the limitations you face while adopting this particular technique? Can you, can you tell me again? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. You, you want how to know many, that? Huh, please how tell many, me. Uh, yeah, my question is how many iterations while going through the inversion process, how a tomographic inversion process, how many iterations did you consider to get a good uh, you know, solution? At the same time, what is the what are the limitations you face while you must have faced some limitations? If so, can you share with us? Yeah, actually the iterative processes is dictated by the quality of the data. That's why we did the 
first the checkerboard test to see the quality of the data, its resolvability. Now, if there are many tests prior to do the inversion for generating tomograms, so we understand that how many damping you have to use, what iteration you have to go for. But the same iteration and same damping factor will be used for resolution test for the original data. So it was the test carried out prior to do the conduction of the inversion tomography. So it depends on the data. If it is the dense data, it is good quality of the data. Maybe the iteration process will not take time. So Professor Zhao tool is also very economically viable that no much iteration, so much iteration you can do, then it is costly, right? So, yeah. so it depends the quality of the data. If the quality is bad, then he cannot consider. I remember that in 4000 data of the Bhuj earthquake, Professor Zhao has taken only 367 earthquakes because all data were not difficult to suppose to be the right data. And that's why the, the quality of the data is actually number of the iterations and, and parameterization dictated. So, okay. so it will be done in that. Yeah, that's correct. Thank, so, yeah, thank you so very much, uh, Professor Mishra and Professor Zhao for addressing my questions jointly. Have a good day. So, uh, as Michel san said, the network, the distribution assessment station, the most important. You should have a very good assessment network, okay? And the quality of the network is also important. And uh, then we can have a very precise hypercenter locations, okay? And uh, in addition to the first PNS view data, we can also use the later phase data, like reflect the views, convert the views, okay? And also, uh, as I showed you today, uh, the traditional tomography only concerns the isotropic velocity variation. That's only the uh, static snapshots. But now we should do a anisotropic tomography. That is, in the inversion, we can also determine the uh, iso uh, anisotropy for the fast burst direction, which reflects the geodynamic information, like the mental flow, uh, crust and resource figure deformation, and also uh, stress. So now I think the static tomography is over. <laughs> <laughs> the isotropic velocity is almost over. So we should, uh, we enter the new era of a uh, uh, nitrotropic tomography. Okay, but uh, for that, the condition is that we must have a better, very good uh, uh, data set. Okay, as uh, Michel San, as uh, Dr. Michel mentioned. What were, what were the limitations in your experiments? Uh, limitation is that the tomography is still the same shot now. It shows the current information, right? right? Tomography and assessment result don't have information about uh, the time. We have no time resolution. Okay, it only shows the current <laughs> current status of the Earth structure. I think that's a major major limitation of tomography, and also assessment result. However, with the uh, uh, with the information about uh, natural P, and we have the some geodynamic information. Okay, I think that's a major limitation. Other limitation is that. Uh, our seismology and tomography can only resolve, mainly resolve three physical parameters. One is the seismic velocity, the second is the attenuation, Q. Okay, the third is the net choppy. And from the velocity, we can also obtain the uh, uh, person ratio. So the physical parameters are limited. <laughs> we, we, cannot deter we cannot resolve temperature. For example, density and the pressure. Okay, so these are well well known physical parameters that can only be estimated from the seismic velocity attenuation or net choppy. That's also the limitation. Very good discussion, Professor Zhao. Thank you so much. I now over to Santanu. If there are some more questions from audiences, please uh, uh, give them some so. chances. Some thank chances. So. Yeah, I think we can we can go to go to. Professor Farouk, Mahmoud Farouk. Uh, yes, I am back. Can I ask a question? Yes, sure, sure. Please go ahead, sir. Okay. Hello, Sensei. I miss you very Hi. much. How are you? Hi, how are you? Fine, thank you. Well, uh, it's nice to meet you again here. Well, I have to see you here. Yeah. Uh, thank you for for giving us this uh, important lecture. You still you still uh, teach us until now for from very long time. Uh, I actually for myself I still uh, learning from you new things every day. So thank you very much for your kind. Thank you. You are doing very well. Both you and Michelle are excellent. 
uh, I'm proud of you. Yeah, you know, you remind me for the very good days I spent with you in Japan, and I have a very good with us in the early time with us. Thank you. You are more than welcome. And uh, I think tomorrow, uh, Dr. Michela will give a talk, right? I will listen to yeah, you also. And yeah, after yeah. a few days, you will, uh, for example, you will also give a lecture. I will listen to your lecture. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. And we ask some uh, tough questions. Always. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> a, a, a couple of questions, if you can uh, answer. Uh, according to your, your talk, uh, I have uh, some comment. Uh, you say that uh, the core seismic sleep area uh, uh, gives the, the high uh, velocity uh, anomaly. Yeah. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Yeah, for example, uh, in a total earthquake. Yeah. Yeah, in a total earthquake. The, the first of everything normally uh, may represent a subject of the seamounts. Maybe uh, uh, the hard rocks, but the lower risk anomaly uh, may be a uh, uh, sediment with the fluids with water. So this variation in the composition and the fluid uh, contents <coughs> may cause a change in seismic velocity. So this is, this is a specific case for uh, for your area for the subduction area. So how, yeah. how about the other other con uh, continental areas without subduction? You can apply this uh, this phenomena or, or this uh, uh, case. Yeah, there could be also uh, uh, composition variations and uh, fluids. The the fluid distribution could be different along the fault zone, right? Yeah. So the yeah. so the heterogeneity in the fault zone could be caused by the composition variation, the fluid contents. And uh, some uh, uh, softer material on the photo zone, which can cause uh, the lethal variation in sense of velocity. Okay. okay. Uh, the second question is important, uh, actually, uh, just uh, uh, for the big, big uh, mountain width. Uh, depend on uh, the sea uh, or uh, migration downward with the depth. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, however, we, we, we also talk about the the uh, the, the slab uh, slab material serpentine or serpentinization. So, uh, how can we differentiate between these both cases if? Uh, uh, to make to make sure that the, the seawater really has a, an effect, or it's only dehydration, no, there is no seawater. I don't know if okay. you understand my um, question. Okay. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Um, well, we think we, we need more parameters. We need a tomography image of not only p velocity as well as the person ratio, and also we need other information from research functions, maybe some other studies to identify the fluid effect, maybe also the mental wedge serpentinization, we certainly need more information, not only one, one parameter, one yeah, parameter. Okay. We also need information from the like uh, electrical conductivity results. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe if you if you can make a, a rock sample uh, beneath uh, some of activity there, we can do some geochemistry uh, analysis uh, to, to to make sure the, the content or the contribution of such uh, material in uh, in the in the in the volcano or something. I think there's I a know. problem in the in the communication. Michela san did you catch the question? I I think uh, uh, Haruk san. Yes. Salam alaikum. Alaikum salam, Michela. How are you? <laughs> fine, fine. Actually, uh, whatever Professor Zhao pointed out that the slip is dictated by the material composition, heterogeneity, and 
the status that what type of the intrusions materials in the rock materials as well. Uh, recently, Professor Zhao clearly indicated that if there is the the high velocity zone and if you are yielding the earthquake, it has energy to proceed further. So slip may be the more. But if it was propelled by some hot materials, propelled by some dehydration processes, then it can in hasten the, 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 the slip more and more. So there are many factors he told to that if the subduction zone, the behavior of the slip will be different. But if in the intraplate region, suppose take a Bhuj earthquake, or recently we worked in the natural hazard in Masad earthquake in Iran, we have seen that the slip is dictated by the composition, which is the heavy material where the where the heterogeneity is high, means uh, it was very competent and compact. Automatically, the slip will be more for the bigger earthquake. But for the for the for the material which is the lower lower velocity zone, the slip will be lesser if it occurs for the low magnitude earthquake. So there are many factors which can dictate. So in order to find the compositional differences, we have to use the other integrated tools. Like uh, Professor Zhao mentioned, the electrical resistivity tool, receiver function, the Poisson's ratio behavior, the velocity and crack density means what type of the material this. These are the dictating actually the the slip. So there is no thumb rule for the for the, the, the slip pattern variability. There are many factors and so tomography is one of the tool to detect the heterogeneity. But what type of the heterogeneity will be supported by the other tools? OK, so these are the things uh, uh, I think integrated approach needed. So tomography always says that they can invite the other methodology to support their inferences. Yeah, that's right. Professor, is that okay with you? Yes, it's, it's okay. Uh, the uh, also my, my question also lead to the the contribution of the sea water. It is it is a it is a very important uh, thing. The sea water uh, effect uh, migrating downward with the slab uh, need, need, need to be uh, more uh, proof. It need to be proved more uh, because it's very important. Otherwise, uh, I, I, I think uh, I don't know. Maybe I need to do some some geometry uh, analysis or some uh, sampling, rock sampling, something like this. I I don't know. Because we, we have some, some example okay. here in, uh, uh, in Saudi uh, Arabia. Uh, Rukhsan, you can write a mail to Sensei and uh, he will give you the, the, the good explanation for that. The plate bending, the plate uh, going down, the plate stagnancy, these all are the factors depend on the conditions of the, the mental, conditions of the upwelling states, condition of the how many, how much the fluids coming up. So maybe I think Sensei has many paper on these. Uh, of the stagnancy yeah, yeah, and the yeah, yeah, down yeah. so we can discuss with him in the email also. Okay. Yeah. Yes, also, yes, the yes. situation changes yeah. from region to region. Yeah. Even the region has yeah. a yeah. different. Yes, I think that's a good suggestion. Yes. You can interact yes. by email. Yeah. Because I I, yes. I I started to understand tomograms first by email communication with Pavel Hajjao. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yes. <laughs> not not email, sir. Okay. That is by letter. In 1998, there is no email in India, so you used to write a hand letter. No, 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 no. That time there was email in India. 96 no, email good. was there in no, India. You saw. So you 98 saw our it. first paper. 98 our first paper came in the BSSA in collaboration with Professor Jha. I, I know that. But you India. showed me hand letter. You showed me the hand letter sent to him. I, I used the there of the data at all, so I remember that it was very <laughs> not so frequent used use in those days. 2000 was the frequent days of reading. So anyway, maybe you are right. Maybe uh, yes, I am not sure. Maybe <laughs> maybe by 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 speed post or whatever. Oh uh, yeah, I, I saw the manuscript and signature since I the many could things be. I have gone and I saw that. <laughs> be, be your memory is more sharp. <laughs> maybe yes. That time Professor Jha was in the United States. Ah, he was uh, there in Hawaii. Okay, thank so you, Shantanu, please. Over to Shantanu, please, okay. for next question. Uh, thank you very much, sir. So I think, due to time constraint, we can take two questions from the attendees. So over to Dr. Antara uh, for question and answer session. We'll take thank only two sir. questions. Obviously. Thank you, sir. First of all, I would like to thank uh, Professor Dabbenja, sir, for uh, giving such an um, informative talk. So I'm going to read out the questions. So first question is, how much accuracy from a seismic tomography model in and around subduction zone 
or convergence area can be achieved. Let me use a tomography in Iran. In Sir, uh, I'm going to read out again. How much accuracy from a seismic tomography model in and around subduction zone or convergence area can be achieved? Means uh, tom tomographic resolution in the subduction area and convergent belt, means collisional belt and subduction zone, how the uh, resolvability of the tomography, how much? Ah, OK, uh, the resolution in the best study we like Japan can have a resolution of 20 kilometers or 30 kilometers. OK, and uh, the tomography results can well explain other geophysical, geological uh, observations. I think for this resolution scale, the result is quite reliable, 20 to 30 kilometers. But for the continental region, the resolution is lower, maybe 50 kilometers or 100 kilometers. It's uh, region dependent. Is that okay, Michelle? Yeah, yeah, it's all right. Okay. Yeah. Again, again, uh, again, Sensei mentioned that the, the network, the, your condition of the network, how denser network you have. So all this taken into account. Even in the convergent zones, the network is very sparse. Then it is uh, poor, but it is do so dense, so it will increase. Since I explained this in his lecture. Last okay. question, please. Thank you, sir. So the next question is: How can we evaluate variability in co-seismic slips? The co-seismic slip. Slips, yes. How can we evaluate variability in co-seismic slips? Okay, the co-seismic slip is usually determined by the waveform invariant. There are some uh, some uh, uh, seismologists working on that. Soon after figures are occurred, they can use the uh, waveform seismograms produced by the big earthquake and to uh, determine the uh, distribution of co seismic slip. So uh, our group uh, is not doing that. We just compare our tomography with those results determined by the other groups. Thank you, Vetas, uh, Dr. Sir. Antara. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you very much, Antara. Uh, thank, thank you, you to Professor, Professor Zhao, Professor Alpinisra, Professor Kansar, and Professor uh, uh, Farooq uh, for the interactive uh, session. Now, may I request uh, Ms. Onnesa, Dr. Hazarika, for a vote of thanks. Over to Ms. Onnesa. Thank you, Dr. Shantanu Borwa, sir. Good morning from India. It is a great privilege for me to propose a vote of thanks to all who have helped in making this technical session a resounding success. On behalf of CSI Ernest and the entire organizing committee of IVW GST 2021, I, Anvesha Dutta Hazorika, extend my sincere thanks to the speaker of our today's session, Professor Daping Zhao, for accepting our invitation and delivering such a wonderful presentation and an insightful talk on the topic Seismic and Isotropy Tomography, New Insight into Seismotectonics, Volcanism and Geodynamics. Thank you, Dr. Zhao, for enriching us with your knowledge on seismic and isotropy tomography. It was quite helpful and indeed a great pleasure to listen to you. I would like to take this opportunity to specially express my deep regards and gratitude to our Honorable Director, Dr. G. Narahari Shastri, for his enormous support, guidance and providing opportunities to organize this international event. I also extend my deep sense of gratitude to our honorable resource person, international advisor of this workshop, Professor Andrew Michael, for inspiring and encouraging us to successfully organize this event. I also extend my special thanks to Professor O.P. Mishra, Director of National Center for Seismology, Government of India, and Professor Mohammed Farooq from King Abdulaziz University, Saudi Arabia, for sparing your valuable time and gracing us with your honorable presence and providing us enormous support and showing great enthusiasm towards this event. I also thank our session chairperson, Professor G.R. Kayal, former Deputy Director General of GSI and co-chairperson, Dr. Saurabh Borwa, Chief Scientist of CSI NEAST, for providing valuable suggestions and for their unwavering support and motivation. My deep sense of appreciation and thanks to all the participants who chose to be live with us and attended with great interest and cooperation and made it a successful event. Last but surely not the least, 
I thank the convener of this workshop, Dr. Shantanu Borwa, for his persistent dedication and leading supervision conducting this workshop and for arranging a wonderful forum to connect with the stalwarts, eminent researchers and academicians across the globe. We eagerly hope to see all of you for the next technical session of this virtual workshop, which will go live at 7 p.m. Indian Standard Time. The speaker for the next session is Dr. Kendra Johnson from Global Earthquake Model, GM Foundation, Italy. She will deliver a talk on Introduction to Probabilistic Seismic Hazard Analysis. Uh, with this, I conclude this session. Once again, I thank you all for being with us and joining us for today's session. Have a wonderful day ahead. Thank you and Namaskar. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, namaste and good afternoon. Uh, have a good day to all of you. Thank you all. Thank you, Professor Jao. Thank you so much for being Thank with you. us.